Hey everybody, welcome back. It's another episode of Coffin Analytics. Today, I wanna to talk to just the teachers. The pandemic has been really hard on everybody, but if you're a teacher, then you know how hard it is to work from home. It adds a whole extra layer of complication. My wife is an elementary school teacher. She teaches fifth grade. And when she's teaching from home, they use lots of Google Sheets for their assignments. She needed a way for her students to let her know if they need help because when they're remote, she can't monitor 27 kids simultaneously. So I use some Google Apps Script, AWS Lambda, API, and SNS to help. The students simply click on a button in the Google Sheet and she gets a text message on her cell phone if they need help. This is actually really easy to do. So I wanna show you how to build it for yourself or any of the teachers in your life. The first thing that you wanna do is add a new Google Sheet. Let's set your Google Sheet aside for a second. We're gonna come back to it, but the next thing we wanna do is create an AWS account if you don't already have one. And you can do that by going to aws.amazon.com. Once you've created your account, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is create your access key and secret access key pair. I strongly suggest creating an IAM user and assigning that key, a secret key pair to that user. But that's not strictly required here, so I'm not gonna to go too much into depth. You can find IAM by going to this top bar here, typing IAM, searching for it, and clicking this, which will bring you to this page, and then you'll click on users and add users. Pretty straightforward. Next, you wanna create your access keys. To do this, in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you're gonna click on your account name. That'll uh, be a drop-down, and then you'll see a place called security credentials. Click on that, and it brings you to this page, your security credentials. From there, you just wanna click on your access keys, which will be a drop-down, and then, I'm not gonna share mine because I don't wanna share my access keys with you, but then there'll be a, a button that says create new keys. So just click that. Make sure you make a note of your security key and your secret access key because it's the only time that you will get to see it. So either uh, you know copy paste it somewhere else where it's safe or download it in a CSV file and then save it somewhere on your hard drive, whatever you wanna do. Just make sure you keep that in a safe place because it's the only time you get to see it. Next, we wanna add our Lambda function. And you can find Lambda by going to this top search bar again and typing Lambda. That'll bring that up and we just click on Lambda. When we get into Lambda, then we'll click on create a function. And when we get into creating a function, we have a couple of options. But for our purposes here, we're gonna author from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name test SMS and then click on our runtime here and I'm gonna choose Python 3.8. The custom runtime is the language that we want to write our Lambda function in and then I'll click on create function. That takes a good 10 to 15 seconds um, to provision but it brings up our, uh, our, our new Lambda function here, test SMS. And right down here, you see this is the code source. This is the location where we're actually going to be writing our code. And I'm gonna expand this to be full screen. You can see it includes a little bit of boilerplate code there. I'm gonna clear that out and we can now uh, have some fun writing some code. To start, we're gonna want, uh, want to add our access key variable. Leave this blank for right now. Um, obviously you will copy and paste your access key in between these quotes. Same with your secret key. Next, you want to import your Boto3 library. Boto3 is the Python software development kit that you use with, uh, with AWS. If you spend any time coding in Python um, in AWS, you'll get very familiar with Boto3, trust me. Next, we want to initialize our Lambda function. So we'll do def Lambda handler and we want to pass in the event and context. Now we want to create an SNS client. So client equals Boto3 dot client and then there are four arguments that we need to pass in here to this uh, to this client. 
the four arguments that we need to pass into our client are the service that we want to use, which is right here, SNS, the access key, secret access key, and then the region that we are um, sending this from. One thing I want to note here is that you might notice if you're uh, eagle-eyed that this US West 2 does not correspond to the region that I'm currently in. What I mean by that is I'm in Northern California region, that is US West 1. So it would be reasonable to assume that I would use US West 1 here like this, but I'm not. I'm using US West 2, which is the Oregon region. The reason for that is because when I created my access key and my secret access key, I was in uh, the Oregon region. So now that I'm using these keys, or what I will paste to be these keys here, I need to use the region that I created them in. I hope that makes sense. So that's why I'm using the Oregon region here, even though I'm in California. If you have any questions about that, put them in the in the chat below and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll answer them. Now that we've created our client up above, we need to actually use this client. The, um, so we're gonna use the client.publish method, and this client.publish method takes two arguments. My phone number, which I'm using my cell phone here, and the message or the, the body of the text that we want to send. Now that our code is written the way that we wanted, we are just gonna have to click on deploy here to deploy this Lambda function. Now we just need to test it. So let's click on this button here to configure a test event. We'll give this, um, we use the hello world template, create a new test event, and then give this a give this a name. We'll leave this JSON as it is, and then click on create. And then we'll click this test button. And then let me pull up my cell phone here. And there it is, Mr. Kaufman. I need help, please. So this is uh, this is working now, which is fantastic. So we've got our core working, but our goal was to send a text message from our Google Sheet. So we need some sort of mechanism by which we can have the trigger in the Google Sheet trigger this Lambda function. And that's where the next piece comes in, the API. So we're gonna go and design our API. To get into the API gateway, we're gonna go back up to the top here and we're gonna type in API. Click on API gateway, that'll bring you to the API gateway homepage you see that there are four types here. We've got HTTP API, WebSocket API, a private REST API, and, and this uh, regular REST API. For our purposes, we're gonna click on build in the REST API. Once you get in, it'll bring up a message uh, regarding the Pet Store API. That's if you're using their tutorial. Uh, we don't need this, so we're just gonna click OK. And then under this section called Create New API, we're gonna click Create New API. And then we're gonna give it a, a test an API name, I should say, we'll call it student SMS. And the description can be just test. You have three options under endpoint type, regional, edge optimized, and private. For our purposes, we're gonna click on regional, and then click create API. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a method. So we'll go under this actions dropdown, and we'll click create method, and that pulls up another dropdown, and we will select the any method. And then we'll click the checkbox here, now we need to select our integration type. We're gonna use Lambda function. We don't need to, to use a proxy integration, so we'll leave that blank, and our region will be US West 1. And then our Lambda function, you can either type the ARN resource, which you can find in the Lambda function itself. Alternatively, you can type the name of the Lambda function. In our case, test SMS. We'll leave it as default timeout because we don't want it to run forever. Now I'm gonna click Save and we're about to give our API gateway permission to access the Lambda function. So I'm gonna click OK there. So you can see here how this works. The client, in this case our Google Sheet, will call the, call the method request, which will call the Lambda function. The Lambda function will execute and it will return the integration response, which is not much in this case, it's only a, a, a 200 uh, OK status back to the, to the client. So it completes the, the full loop. I absolutely love APIs because they're the awesome pipelines that allow you to connect two different pieces of software. They kind of feel like wormholes to me in a, in a weird sense. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but it makes sense in my head. Um, so APIs are really cool. So let's go ahead and click on test here to test this. I'm gonna use post 
as my method, but I'm also gonna shrink my screen here because the, the logs in the output after you run the test show a whole bunch of security details that I don't really wanna share. So I'm gonna use post and then I'm gonna click test here and then I'm gonna pull up my cell phone face so that you can see that this actually worked. And it did. And I also got my sweatshirt delivered from Amazon. So that's a good thing. This is working as expected. Now we just need to deploy it. So we're gonna go back to the actions drop down, and then we're gonna select deploy API. We're gonna give this a deployment stage and we're gonna call this just SMS deploy. And then we can give it a test uh, stage description if we like, and we'll click on deploy. When that's done deploying, it will then give us an invoke URL. We need to make a note of this, copy this, because we're gonna take this URL and we're gonna put it into our Google Apps Script code. This will be the URL that we call in order to invoke uh, the API and thus trigger the Lambda, and then send the text message. So copy this. Now we're gonna go back to the Google Sheet that we created earlier on. In your Google Sheet, we're gonna click on um, extensions and then Apps Script and we gotta write ourselves a little bit of code. We gotta write one function here. So in the editor and your code.js, we need to write um, some simple code. We're gonna create a function and we're just gonna call it uh, do API <laughs> because I'm not very creative at, uh, at naming things. Uh, we'll close the parentheses and then we'll do this. And we're gonna wanna do URL fetch app dot fetch and then this will be where we paste the URL that we just copied from our API here. Paste this, oh I didn't, uh, didn't copy it to my clipboard. Paste. All right, that's. All right. And then I want to mute HTTP exceptions. Now make sure you save this code and then we want to deploy it. And then for a type, we'll call this a web app and then our configuration, we'll just uh, call this our uh, SMS deploy. I wanna execute it as myself and then I'm going to allow anyone that has a Google account to access it so I'm gonna click deploy. You'll get an error uh, that says Google hasn't verified this app, so click here on advanced, and then go to send, and click allow. So this is now giving it access to your Google account. So there we go. Now that it is deployed, I'm gonna click on this run and the execution started and the execution completed. So let's go back to my cell phone face to make sure that we have a text message. And there we go, that worked. Now that we know that this is working, we can close out of our code editor here. We can go back to our spreadsheet. The, the very last thing that we need to do here is just add a trigger. So we want something to allow the students or anyone who's gonna use this to click a button that will cause all of this to work, all the, all, the, all the gears to turn. So we're gonna insert a button here. So to do that, we're gonna highlight a group of cells, we're gonna click insert, and then insert image over cells, and we're gonna do a Google image search, and we'll just uh, do Click me. That brings up uh, buttons here, 
and then we'll just click this one for no reason and then insert that brings it up pretty big make this a little bit smaller here Now there's three little dots here. I'm gonna click on that, left click there, and then I'm gonna assign a script. This is what our function that we just wrote is called. I'm gonna click OK. And now when I click this button, I should get a text message. Pull up my camera, or my cell phone, excuse me. Click this button, and we should get a text message. And voila, there it is, it's working. We now have a spreadsheet that we can send a text message from. And if you're a teacher, you don't ever have to worry about giving out your cell phone number to students who want to reach you. Do me a huge favor and absolutely smash that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the chat below and I will definitely answer, get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So thanks everybody, have a great day.